Um, we're delighted to host the closing ceremony here tonight in the South County. Uh, we have some great background uh, banter going on there. It, to me, it's been a fantastic success. A lot of people around the village are talking about it. And it's just another thing that really adds to the community spirit. So I'm delighted that um, you've decided to have the closing ceremony here in the South County. Um, the first person that's going to come up here this evening is Ronnie McGinn with some of his great poetry. And um, also after that we have Billy O'Callaghan who's uh, a local legend. Uh, Billy is, is, we're very proud of Billy here in Douglas and especially with his uh, latest award there for 2013, short story of the year. A national award, you know, it's just a fantastic achievement and he's finally getting uh, the credit that he deserves. So, just to introduce uh, Ronnie McGinn. Put your hands together for Ronnie, please. No, uh, I didn't know. I was wondering what I would do when Billy said, just tell him the story about how you started off. Well, I started off in Douglas, in the National School on the Carrick and Road. And uh, I used to live up in Frankfurt, and I had to walk to school every morning and go home. And uh, we had a teacher there called Mr. Harrington who uh, I was mad about because he sat around on the table, he sat around the fire and he read stories to us all day. And uh, by the time I was five years old, I knew all about Treasure Island and Long John Silver and uh, Coral Island and everything else. And um, one day he started off with this uh, poem like, Up the Early Mountain, Down the Russian Glen. And I said, oh my God, that's fabulous. That's much better than Mary had a little lamb. And <laughs> So I was in, in charge of this, and uh, a couple of years later I was uh, transferred from Douglas School into Christians. Now, when I was in Douglas, my dog used to come with me into the school, down to two hours down to the school every morning, wait outside the door every day, and come home in the evening. So my dog was my, my pal, like. And uh, when I got to Christians, I had to cycle in and cycle out, and no dog, and then one day the dog died and I was totally heartbroken. I couldn't stop crying. I was up on my ball and crying, and I started to write a poem about my dog. Now, I was just nine years old, and the poem I wrote, the dog's name was Peggy. And I said, Peggy, oh Peggy, my doggy, my friend, where is the love that to me you did lend? Here now is your soft back, your long flapping ears. Oh, Peggy, my doggy, all gone with my tears. And what now of your big heart, I thought could not fail. All gone, little doggy, and the shake of your tail. Ah, once, little doggy, you were so fine. Your dark eyes would shine with sweet, with sweet love and friendship, I knew was all mine. Then your heaven claimed you, your life at an end. Oh, Peggy, my Peggy, my doggy, my friend. Well, I went to school next morning. I went to school the next morning, I had wake all night, bawling, crying. I was a bit late going to the school, went up to the teacher, I said, my dog died. I got a slap across the face. He whipped the palm over, he threw it in the bin and said, sit down. No, that was the last day I was in Christians. A few years later, um, I was around here and uh, we're up in Vernemont to pick in blackberries. And there was a new owner up in Vernemont, an age of Kells. And he came out and said, you're stealing my property. Give me a slap across the face. And I was going home, bawling, crying. And on the way up, I, uh, <laughs> I met um, one of our neighbours, a fellow called Tom Lyons. And he said, what happened to you? Like, and I thought, I said, well, I told him what happened. He said, we'll go down and sort him out. No, Tom had been uh, in the Marines and he'd just been home on the holidays. So we went down to Vernamont and he said, I'd pick away. And the Major came out and, um, you know, a couple of blows later, like he was unconscious on the ground. <laughs> so Tom said, I, I need a pint after that. So off down to the South County. And the old bar in here, like, it was a much smaller. And there was a room at the back where, you know, you had the woodbine and the pint. Uh, Beamish was, on uh, yeah, the south side you drank Beamish. It was on the south side drink, and Murphy's was the north side drink, so everyone drank Beamish. No, I wouldn't drink that, I'd just have a few glasses of cider, you know. 
um, wasn't <laughs> approval at the time. And, but they were in there singing songs and, you know, telling stories and um, Peace Me used to be singing the Gal Valley Farmer. And then your man, Tom Lyons, started singing this poem. Like, and you all know it, I think. A bunch of boys were hooking it up in the Malamute saloon. And the kid that handles the music box was hitting the right time too. And back at the bar in a pub again, sat dangerous Dan McGrew. And watching the way that he played his hand was the lady that's known as you. When out of the night, which was fifty below, and into the din and the glare, there stumbled a minor fresh from the creeks, down dirty and not for bear. Now he looked like a man with a foot in the grave, and scarcely the strength of a house. We taught him to put a gold in the bar, and he called on drinks for the house. But there was none who could place that stranger's face, though we searched ourselves for a two. Yet we drank to his health, and the last to drink was dangerous Dan McGrew. And I'm not as wise as Luke's ever guys, but strictly between us two, the woman that kissed him and stole his gold was the lady that's known as Lee. I'm delighted that so many of you have, have uh, decided to join us here tonight uh, for the closing event of the Lennox Robinson uh, Literary Festival. Hopefully this will be the first of many Lennox Robinson Literary Festivals uh, in the years to come. And we, we really had, we had a great turnout for, for almost every event. Um, we had a great variety of events, so hopefully it wasn't boring for anyone. And hopefully tonight won't be too boring for anyone. And all the writers, actors and poets, they, they, they gave of their time and their talent free because th this is a completely voluntary festival. We, we don't have a penny to pay anyone. And, and we didn't, you know, everything was free, which was the way we wanted it to be. So, um, so I, I think it's been successful so far. Really, I have to give special thanks to um, Liam McCarthy, he's filmed uh, quite a lot of the festival um, and he's, he's really gone above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, we couldn't have expected as much as, as, as he did. I, I really do have to uh, mention um, Pete Duffy here who organised the sound for us through the whole festival and really, uh, you know, he was, he was the glue that held the whole festival together. He was the one that did most of the running. I suppose it, it, a fitting thing to say would be um, welcome home Lennox Robinson because that, that, that was really the point of, of this festival that most people here probably never heard of Lennox Robinson before um, before this weekend um, well you've heard of him now uh, and hopefully you'll hear a lot more of him um, you know as, as time goes by if anyone here was in St Columbus Hall today to see the play uh, it was Lennox Robinson's first play, The Clancy Name, and it was just absolutely brilliant. Um, and it, it's only, you know, it's only a small taste of how good he was. So um, he's well worth exploring, and he's, he's definitely due for, um, for a revival. By eight o'clock I've had enough. The ferry is not due to sail until eleven, but I make the excuse that there are some things I'd like to do before I leave. I want to walk a while, maybe look in on a few old faces. And I want to stop at the graveyard, pay my respects, whisper a prayer for us all, the living and the dead. The old ghosts are waiting. I shake Jack's hand because I hope it would be too awkward, even though it is probably something we both want. So long by, I say, hoping in my heart that it's not goodbye clenches his mouth and nods, then goes to sit in the corner. Tommy looks at him for a moment, then follows me outside. He walks out onto the road. It's been good seeing you, Bill, he says. Take care of yourself now. My throat hurts from tears that are near, but trying not to fall. Down in the harbour, a boat has come in after two or three days at sea. 
the men bone tired would be gutting and creating their catch for the mainland markets. A breeze blowing in breaths from the east carries the impatient screams of the gulls as they circle and perch in anticipation of the scraps. I write, I say, the best that I can manage, and I slip my hands into my pockets and stroll away, counting the steps so that I won't look back. <laughs>